Nice to meet you, Steve. He really does. Okay, everybody write it in for next season. <laughs> yeah, we're there. Yeah, Michio Kako explains how to build a power range. <laughs> <laughs> and write a stand <laughs> coming out next year too, so it'll be very topical, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Kaku, what are your favorite science fiction films? Well, my favorite is one that you may not have seen, it's Forbidden Planet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a great film, right? Oh, you like, you like the classics, huh? Uh, first, it's based on Shakespeare, it's based yeah. on The Tempest. Second, it talks ah. about the ultimate goal of technology. No, there is a goal, and that really? is power without instrumentality, that is total mind control of the universe. Whatever you dream of materializes, right? Oh, that's good stuff. So in some sense, it not only gives you a uh, uh, Shakespearean metaphor, but it gives you the end point of technology. The purpose of all technology is power without instrumentality, right? Huh. Then the problem, of course, is once you get it, you commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> so there's irony there. So there's everything in it. It's and awesome. it provided the Twilight Zone with bullet spacesuits and, and spaceships. No, and, and look at the costumes. They all look like dentists. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Star Trek, right? They have the commander. They have the science officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that movie had Star Trek inside it, too. Not only does it have the Tempest, but it has Star Trek with the guy. Plus, they go into these capsules uh, to decelerate. Well, that's just like a transporter. Right? So that movie had everything in it. Oh, yeah. i got to watch that again. That's great. And, and, I was going to say, I don't uh, remember that part. Yeah, we're going to have to buy that. <laughs> yeah, she'd probably yeah. be the first electronic mannequin I built. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, they're, they're very rarely do you have a movie with that kind of content. To it. Really? That's a great recommendation. The other movie that I would like to see that's ever been made is a movie about the Foundation. Oh yeah, that would be really hard to make. You know, they think of radio drama. I think if they radio made drama. it, they would ruin it by trying to cram into the audition. Yeah, they would ruin it if they did it. Yeah, it, yeah, you just imagine how you would do it, and then you go crazy. Right? It's just too far reaching. It's too profound. The, the whole concept is too deep, profound, and hmm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would yeah. probably be the philosophical implication. They would turn it into a TV series, and that would ruin it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a radio series. That my back back line, not, <laughs> not a shot that. even fired until the second book, Foundation and Empire. Right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. It's like, people, how would people even receive a basically a drama yeah. that just happens to be in space? Right. Well, that's the problem, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's why, you turn, that's why you have a TV series. So that, that you don't, so that you can have like 26 episodes in a season, so you can spend one episode not dealing with science fiction content, but just having a job. The problem is, though, the TV show would be picked up by who? Fox, and they would can it after the first yeah. And so the episode's out of order, of course. <laughs> Well, the only network I know is You see the problem, right? Anyway, that's the greatest <laughs> movie that was never made. Because <laughs> 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 it is just conceptually too difficult. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Doctor, would you ever think about making a book about what it would take to get us to a level one situation? Oh, no. Well, I think we're headed for that within 100 years. Really? Okay. Yeah. In fact, that's my next book. <laughs> well, then you have yeah, a new book. Are you going to be on the book signing tour? In March. I'll be on the book tour in March. Okay. Really? It'll be announced on your website where you're going to be. Yeah, with? and all that. I'll be, I'll be announced where I'll be traveling. You're going to be traveling. Same publisher? Uh, same publisher, right. right. The book is about <laughs> the year 2100. Okay. Okay. I try to get the best projection of what 2100 is going to look like. Ooh. Now think about it. What, what, what was 1900 like? We had wagons. My grandmother was born We had donkeys. Right? That's they were 1900, really right? Hey, the fuzzy, so, the fuzzy with it, it will be around forever. Right? No, no <laughs> what will 2100 look like? I mean, that's no, mind-boggling. Yeah. Brilliant. Everything we consider 1900, 2000. But anyway, that's the book. Wait to read it. Our tentative title is Physics of the Future. Oh, yeah, right. Good. Talking about 2100. And is there a question? Is there a serious question? 
question of will we live that long? Uh, well, I have to address that question. Do you think we'll survive, personally? I personally think so, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're the ones in the that makes it? In what, in what form, I don't know. But yeah, yeah. I think yeah. What, how we define the, the planet, the country, yeah. any one view, like what you have to have. I'm going to be like, head in a bottle of Futurama or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, any visitors, if there's a little bit of credibility there. Yeah. But we're not having a seance in order to connect with the alien spirit. Right? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's not the culture for that. Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, so there are, there are limits. Uh, yeah. Don't get the black candle. Yeah. So we can see what you found at some point. Just ahead. <laughs>
of all human energy of the universe. The larger the universe, the more energy it has. The energy of nothing. The two terms that I like to wait. And when you want to sugar, if you want to see the two terms, there's the last chapter. <laughs> Well, we used to think that this term was zero. So the universe simply expands normally like a power, like T squared, T2, like a power. But the universe was accelerating like an exponential. And therefore, a normal universe will not give you the next exponential. You have to energize the second term. The second term is not zero. Many people call that Einstein's biggest mistake. But now we realize it's Einstein's revenge. That term is not zero. It makes up most of the universe. That second term is called the disorder expansion. It will accelerate the universe. So we once thought it was zero, the second term, the energy of nothing. Now we realize the energy of nothing is greater than the of the universe. Where does that come from? It's just in the equation. Now the question is, where does that equation come from? We hope from string theory. You know. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> well, please tell me you have some theory, something behind you. This is not just like you are dark. And you said, okay, let's go with some stuff. String theory has this term in it. Okay. But the question is, we want to calculate the magnitude of that term. We just don't want to calculate the fact that the term exists. We want to calculate the size of that term. Okay? That's where, it starts, that's where string theory starts to get a little bit fuzzy. <laughs> How many strings? In other words, we're not smarter than guitar to solve all the theory. The theory is smarter than we are. No one is smart enough to solve all the string equations to calculate how much the energy of the thing. Uh, uh, well, as many, as many particles as there are. Yeah, well, if you think of a, of a pond, every point in the pond connects to the third dimension. So one string, one particle, not one string, multiple particles. Well, each uh, particle corresponds to a vibration of each. Right. So one string, many vibrations, many particles. Well, one string can create as many vibrations right. as you want, but at any given time, it's one particle. So you are a symphony of strings. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Bless you, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the graviton would be the particle of gravity, right. and it's another level of vibration of the string. If I take a string, take the lowest vibration, it has all of Einstein's theory, it has all of quark, which is the lowest amount of vibration. Oh, no, it's part of the graviton forces. Travels at the speed of light. Matter travels below the speed of light. One thing I remember seeing in one game that it actually lowers the mass below what it should be. So that's what I wanted to say. What? We see the movie Event Horizon. I saw it. Oh, was that the one with the, with the weird creature? Yeah. Oh, I hated that movie. Oh, I, I was so disappointed. No. Yeah, kind of silly, yeah, it's no, true. No, they were recycling a movie prop and, and uh, had to weave a story around it, and it had to be in space because that was the hype at the time. No, I hated it. You must have loved the explanation with the piece of paper and the pencil through it, huh? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it made no the movie is, though, I, I didn't quite get the movie. They tried to mix two genres, horror and space and sci-fi. They tried to recycle movie talk. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, that's, that is what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Well, most science fiction movies are done by two writers with one high school physics. I actually prefer reading it. I prefer reading it than watching it. Later. There are some good movies, but I do prefer it in a book or a short story. There's some really cool short stories. Well, you know, like you know, Rocket Bank and Out of Space. They make noise when they explode. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ray guns, you can see the laser beam going like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes for good visual effects. Yeah, it makes sure. for good visual effects. Sure. <laughs> sure. I suppose. If you saw Rocket Zigzag, it's not as flashy as, you know, like that, right? <laughs>
Is there anything you want to be on that? Or do you find yourself, do you do like, oh man, I'd love to be on that show? You know, like, I remember talking about Star Trek, there's like a... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to be a bulk on Star Trek. Are going to